The Apostle Paul said this. First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 6, he says, For a great door and effectual is open unto me. But he adds, but there are many adversaries. A great door and effectual. That is a powerful opportunity to be effective for the gospel has been opened to me. Isn't that wonderful? God bless you, Brother Booth. But with this open door, he says, but there are many adversaries. Amen. This he said about the favorable circumstances and the great opportunities for the gospel that were present at Ephesus at the time. But even with the favorable circumstances, there are yet present, not just adversaries, but many adversaries. This is one of the reasons that believers have to be seekers at all times. It can, it can be your season. It can be your year. It can be your time. To come forth. It can be your day. It can be your hour. But Satan will not lay down and play dead simply because it's your year, your season, your time, your moment. It can be your time, but there are still many adversaries. The same thing happened to Paul at Taurus. You remember at Taurus, he had favorable circumstances, and yet he had great challenges. He says this in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2. He says, furthermore, when I came to Taurus to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was open unto me. For the Lord. With this open door of opportunity, uh, verse 13 says, I had no rest in my spirit because I found not Titus, my brother, but taking leave of them, I went from thence to Macedonia. He said, an open door is open. Great opportunities abound, and yet he says, I couldn't rest. And he says, I had no rest in my spirit. Now learn this, because you, you, 2019 is, is going to be a wonderful time, but remember, I said on New Year's Eve that this message, seek the Lord, the texts that we preach from. I've said from the beginning that it's not for everyone, although it is, but it's only obtainable to those who are thirsty. I said to the guys today in the back after the leadership, I said, you have to come to the, to the conclusion that some people just aren't going to change. Some people will never be, Sister Jennifer, Coach Hoggart, they will never be the leaders that they could be. They'll never overcome 
the glitches or, or the character defects or some of the things that we cited today because they don't want to. Bad enough. They are satisfied where they are. And no matter what you say, they like themselves. Though they may be mean and cantankerous, they like themselves as they are. I'm happy, sad. I'm content with a scar on my face. I'm all right just being all right. You can't do anything about that. You have to, you still love them. You don't put people out to church or you, you, you still, you have to, you have to, Elevate your mind. Amen. See, some things in your life the Lord will never change. It's just not going to change. People say that when the three Hebrew, Hebrew boys were thrown in the fiery furnace, that God cooled the flame. But one of these days I'm going to preach he didn't cool the flame. That's going to be my text. Preaching today from the subject, he didn't cool the flame. He didn't cool the flame. For the men who threw them in got burned up. They were consumed by the flame. Well, what did God do? He changed them. See, Lord, if you're not going to change my circumstances, then God change me and give me the ability to serve despite the existing circumstance. The Bible said David encouraged himself. Praise the Lord. You got to know how to adjust and move on. Paul was there and he was waiting uh, for, 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 for Titus. What happened was he had left Titus in Corinth. There was a problem in Corinth and, 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 and yet God was calling Paul elsewhere. So he's in Taurus waiting for Titus. And while waiting for Titus, he gets a vision from the Lord that night. He sees a man of Macedonia saying to him, come over to Macedonia and help us. Now he's in a strait. Where's Titus? But God is calling me to Macedonia. But I need Titus. I need to know how the saints at Corinth are doing. I need to know that Titus is safe. What do I do? You see the circumstances? An open door. An opportunity to come forth. To do the work of the Lord. But at the same time, complexities. Trials. Tribulations. He said, you know it was real because he said in his spirit, I found no rest. So he decided to leave Taurus and go on over to Macedonia believing that God would take care of Titus. And I'll tell you something. Let me tell you how important the ability to serve, uh, even though there are challenges, are ah, that decision recorded in Acts chapter 16, verse 8 through 9, and 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 through 13, read it when you get home, was one of the great turning points in the history of evangelism in the world. 
Acts 16, 8 through 9. Read it when you get home. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 through 13. They deal with the same thing. It was a turning point for evangelism because had Paul not gone to Macedonia, then Europe would not have been evangelized. And had he not evangelized Europe, the gospel would have never gotten to the United States of America. Had the gospel not gotten, had not gotten here, we would not be saved. So this open door that was set before him had even our spiritual lives in the balance. Thank God that this seeker leader followed the Holy Spirit. Thank God that he was anointed to do so. In our text, in our text, the Bible tells us that there were th three, the Bible speaks of three of many groups, perhaps, that departed from Babylon. The scripture gives us in-depth records on three of the groups. Uh, the little children having church today. Amen. Amen. Y'all help me out. I want you to hear this. Three of the groups. The first group left in 536 B.C., the year that Cyrus, also in Daniel, called Darius. Darius, there were more than one Darius. But Darius was not a proper name, or should I say a proper name only. Darius was a title, like Caesar. When Daniel speaks of Darius, Daniel was also talking about Cyrus that Isaiah spoke of. And Cyrus is a proper name. So it was King Cyrus who gave the edict in 536 B.C. to allow the saints to go back up to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. This group was led by Zerubbabel and Joshua. This is the group that the prophet Haggai and Zechariah ministered to. The second group in 457 B.C. was under Ezra, and the third group in 444 B.C. was under the leadership of Nehemiah. The book of Ezra tells of the first two groups. Our text deals with the first group today. They had a rough ride. Amen. They walked some 1,600 miles from Babylon back to Jerusalem. And when they got there, they found, just as with Paul, there were many adversaries. Our Lord said this about life and adversaries. And opportunities. Jesus said this in Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 29 through 30. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you that there is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or land for my sake and the gospels, but he shall receive an 100 fold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. Notice what he says. I'm going to bless you for following me. But this is not a fairy tale. The God of the Bible doesn't offer magic. There is no such thing in this life of 
and they live happily ever after. See, the Lord blesses us, but the blessings come with persecutions. Challenges come. Our message today be begins with the first group of exiles having arrived back home. In chapter 3 of Ezra, they're in Jerusalem. They made it. They're there. And it was an exciting time. And it was a time that was pregnant with possibilities and potential. Can you imagine how glad they were to get back. The text will reveal that there were some people who were, who returned, who were, who lived through the exile. They remembered Jerusalem the way that it was. Hallelujah. There were others who were born in Babylonian captivity. Yes, some knew nothing but Babylon. Some knew Jerusalem and Babylon. But even those who knew nothing but Babylon had been taught their history. And they knew that the land of the Chaldees, Babylonia, was not their home. And they were told from the time that they were born that, the, that at a certain time, depending on when they were born, the Lord is going to get us out of here. For the promise was that we would be here for 70 years. But after 70 years, we'll get, pack your bags because we're going home. And they believed it and they expected it. Oh my, I hope that I have some folk that I'm preaching to who still believe the promises of God and who still expect the Lord to keep his word. Now, they had been through a lot to say the least. Their sinful way had caused uh, the Assyrians to destroy the northern kingdom, and the Babylonians demolished Jerusalem, Jerusalem and the two tribes that made up the southern kingdom. The pain and suffering of having lost their homes, lives, cities, and having been deported to a foreign land and most of all, the destruction of the temple were finally behind them. We made it. Praise the Lord. We survived. We're back home. Amen. God kept his word. Cyrus set us free. And now we're back in Jerusalem. As a matter of fact, they were saying, Jeremiah... 29 and 11 came to pass. I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. But the thoughts to bring you to an expected end. You expected to leave Babylon someday. Well, we've left. And we're among the first group to get back home. And can, can you see through their eyes. Praise the Lord. Now, they saw the chartered remains of where the temple used to be. They saw where streets have been grown up. Weeds and bushes and all kinds of things uh, existed because destruction had taken place. Are you with me? But they knew that they could uh, make it right. They knew that God would give them the ability to revive this place. And our text shows us something. Bear with me as I walk you through this. The first thing that they did is that they restored worship. Let me tell you something. When you talk about worship, you're talking about prayer. You're talking about worshiping the Lord through acknowledging his greatness. Worship incorporates praise. It, it, the entire Levitical system, worship incorporates giving, praying, seeking the Lord. They understood how important church was. 
We're living in a day now where the world is trying to de-emphasize the importance of worship. The importance of our coming together. Uh, I heard uh, a, a Bonner report show that uh, uh, many of our young people uh, leave home, leave church after 18. And sometimes after they graduate from college, they, they leave church and they begin to uh, give some of the reasons. One of the reasons are uh, because of jobs. They take jobs that take them out of service. You know, it's amazing the the, uh, the corporate world and the work world doesn't respect uh, the rights of worshipers like they used to. Uh, I, I'm just I'm just floored with, uh, and I talk about it. I I will always talk about it. I'm just floored with. The things that the a, uh, what is it uh, AAU does uh, there uh, at eleven o'clock on Sunday mornings you can drive past certain uh, fields and you see kids playing soccer and ball games and games at eleven o'clock on Sunday morning church time and their and their parents have them out there and 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 some of you you will, will take your kids we can't find them on Wednesday night to come out to the youth program. Can't find it. Matter of fact, some have never been. Now, we have a wonderful participation. I'm not, I'm not trying to recruit, but I'm, I want to show you if you're thinking uh, the mistake you're making because you de-emphasize the importance of worship. We, they, they are available for sports. They're available for this. They're available for that, but they're not available for worship. They're not available for prayer. They've never come to any of the shut-ins. They've never come to any of the things that where we get an opportunity to pour, pour this thing into the children at, their, at an early age in their formative years when they're in high school and junior high and when they're competing with other young people and all kinds of ideas are being thrown at them in every commercial, every movie. Uh, praise the Lord, half the coaches are per perverts themselves. They got all kinds of things going on and we don't see the value of worship the first thing they did was they restored worship they said before we go anywhere before we rebuild anything even before we began to build the temple we need to worship the Lord and and not just a hey, and not just any kind of worship but we need to restore the worship. Now look at this. Now look at this. I understand. I understand. Keeping up with the times. I understand that, that we have to shift in certain ways. But they said we've got to restore the, the, the worship that was written in the law that Moses, the man of God, gave us. We got to go all the way back and do it just like that. We can't learn Babylonian style worship because we're not released to worship Nebo. We hadn't been released to worship Mudok, the gods of the Babylonians. We've been released to worship the God of Moses. Upper room, we worship the God of the Bible. We worship Bishop Mason's God. We, we worship the late great James Henry Turner's God. We worship the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And our worship ought to resemble their worship. Our songs ought to be like their songs. Our, praise the Lord. It ought to be recognizable. They said we got to do this in a manner that if Moses came back and walked into our service, Moses would recognize what we're doing. Can I get a witness? Yes, and, and, and verse 8 of chapter 3. Are you praying, are you praying with me? It, uh, I'm on my way somewhere. Praise the Lord. See, uh, it, it was a revival because they, they, they began to feed the workers. <clears throat> feed the workers and cut down the timber. I can smell 
the wood. As the timber is being cut, measure twice, cut once. Hallelujah. The, the excitement. Can you hear the hammers and the nails? Because now they're about to get started on building the temple. Verse 8 says, Now in the second year of their coming unto the house of God. First, when they first got there, they set up worship. Now they're there in the second month began Zerubbabel the son of Shealtel, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, and the, and the remnant of their brethren, the priests, and the Levites, and all they that were come out of the captivity unto Jerusalem, and appointed Levites from 20 years old and upward to set forward the work of the house of the Lord. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. They began to hammer. And Joshua, then stood Joshua, look at this, with his sons and his brethren, uh, Kedemel and uh, his sons and Judah, all of them together to set forward the workmen in the house of God. Amen. And the sons of Hinadad and their sons and their brethren, the Levites. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, look at this, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets. And the Levites and the sons of Asaph with cymbals uh, to praise the Lord after the ordinances of David the king. A lesson here in leadership. See, some of you, some leaders don't know how to praise the Lord. See, you got to know how to praise God along the way. You, you got to know how uh, to be thankful for where you are. Somebody said, well, our, our academy ought to be beyond where it is. Well, in time it will. But I thank God for where we are. Well, upper room, you should be further than where you are. Well, I don't know about that, but I thank God for where we are. What, what, what is my point? What is my point? They didn't wait to build the whole temple before they called in the singers and called in the musicians and began, before they began to praise the Lord. See, so you, you got to know how to look at what is right. So, well, I just notice everything that's wrong. That's the devil. Uh-uh, you got to notice the goodness of the Lord. You got to see when God have made a thing right even if it's not perfect yet. See, if, if, if it's got to be perfect before you will give God glory for it, you may never give him glory. If everything got to be, if, if it all got to be done, football, football, uh, football teams lie like that. I saw one of them the other day. Say, yes, we just won the game and we're getting ready to go to the AFC championship. But then the guy threw in that lie, but we haven't done anything yet. Now, now, they say that, but if they lose that next game, guess what they do? Well, we still had a great season because I thought you said you haven't done anything. Oh, well, we made it to the championship game. We did this. We did that. Well, you should have said that then. So you got to thank the Lord along the way. I thank God for where I am right now. Praise the Lord. I praise God. The Lord was good before he gave us children. Well, I'm not going to praise him until he give me a child. You may never praise him. Praise the Lord because he made you. That, that may be the reason why he decided you're not worth it. You got to look at where you are. Oh, I can't thank the Lord. I need a bigger house. You better thank him in that house where you are. 
you better praise the Lord and, and call hey and call for some Levites and call for some worshipers and 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 and, and call some folk over and say we're gonna have a praise party. Well, I thought you said God says he's going to give you a mansion. Yeah, but on the way, I'm going to thank him for this apartment. On the way, I'm going to thank him for this room. On my way, I'm going to thank him for this trailer home. On my way, I'm going to thank him. My God, they, they laid the foundation. They said, stop right there. Because this time last year, we didn't have a foundation. This time year before last, we were in Babylonia. Look at where the Lord had brought us from. Well, I'm ashamed of my car. You riding? I remember when you were walking. And you didn't have a car. Praise the Lord. Were you ashamed of your feet? If God has given you something, it, 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 listen, listen, listen. If it's got to be a Rolls Royce or a Mercedes before you can praise the Lord, you're going to miss out on a many praise opportunities. You're going to miss out, praise God, on perfecting your praise. You better learn how. I better learn how, we better learn how to praise the Lord every step of the way. Somebody give God a I'm making progress praise. <laughs> I should be able to join you in your I'm making progress praise. You got to do it because the truth is we're all works in progress. None of us are perfect. None of us get it right all the time. So they stopped right where they were and said, let's get the sons of ASAP and let's get the church house banned and let's praise the Lord and let's sing, to, let's sing by course in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord because he is good and his mercy endureth forever toward Israel and to all. Uh, and then it says, and all the people shouted with a great shout. You know, I like that better. You know, I know now it's popular to tell everybody, you know, everybody scream. But you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Men don't scream. As a man, I'm not a screamer. I'm a shouter. So instead of uh, everybody scream, how about everybody shout? Hey! I was playing with my grandbabies one day, and uh, I told Pam, I said, now when I do that, so I want you to Screaming, boy, she let one go. And I couldn't, I said, Lord, how in the world do you learn how to do something like that that, that soon? And, and she's a girl. Amen. That's what girls do. But men, he, they said, let everybody shout. And they began to make noise to the Lord. But it was a, it was a strange noise. I'm going to preach in just a minute. Because, you see, I told, remember, I told you in my text, there were, uh, uh, different eyes in the crowd. And, we're, and we, we got to guard against this. See, because just because you've seen better days don't let that rob you of giving God the glory and the praise and recognizing his goodness with things being as they are. See, the Bible says in verse 12, but many of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers who were ancient men who had seen the first house, Solomon's house, when the foundation of this house 
which was called Zerubbabel's temple. When the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, they wept with a loud voice and many shouted aloud for joy. So that the people could not discern the noise, the noise of the shout for joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a great, with a loud shout. And the noise were, was heard afar off. Now, you who feel that when you got it in your day, you feel like people don't praise the Lord like they used to. Everybody feels that way. Everybody looks back on the past nostalgically. And what's too painful to remember, we choose to forget. That's why when people talk about the past, they talk about it like it was perfect. Oh, back in the day, honey child, when I got saved, the devil was in the church then. There's never, there's never been an age where Satan wasn't Satan. There's never been an age where people didn't err and mess up and all that kind of stuff. Oh, they really preached back then. Well, get the tapes. Some of them did, some of them didn't. Some of what we call preaching then, we wouldn't call that preaching now. Amen. Right. Have you ever gone back and watched a movie? Uh, that was your favorite movie 30 years ago or 40 years ago or when you was a child. And how real it looked. And how interesting the dialogue was. Then. But 40 years later, you watch that same movie. And you don't even see what you saw in it. I went back. Uh, uh, I'm 57 years old, and I remember when the movie Shaft came out. <laughs> Richard Roundtree. Shaft. Oh, boy. I know some of y'all are too young. But oh, for those who remember, that was groundbreaking. Because we had not had a black African-American male who looked like a black man with, with dark brown, a, a nappy afro. See, Superfly had long, slick hair. <laughs> See, that was Superfly. But Shaft looked like a brother. But when I watched it with grown eyes, uh -huh. with sharper ears, yeah. with a better appreciation for script and dialogue, right. it did not have the same effect. So I couldn't enjoy it again and said, that's it. <laughs> Be careful that because, you know, don't let your mind trick you and have you thinking that all, all of the years and times past, and I'm spending too much time on this, was the golden years. So therefore, whatever God does now, it's really not worth your praise. It's really not worth you giving God the glory you de he deserves because it's not like it was when you lived somewhere else. All right? The problem is, Others hear that noise. Others see that body language. And it can invite the wrong thing. There were people who lived in the land. Who were they? The, since the land had been conquered, well, who lived there? Well, when the Assyrians conquered the northern kingdom, According to, and read when you get home, 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 24 and 25, they repatriated the land 
with men from Babylon, from Kalsa, from different places. They settled foreigners in the northern kingdom. When Nebuchadnezzar conquered Jerusalem uh, in 2 Kings chapter 25, verse 8 and down, he left the poor in Jerusalem. He had no use for them. The resettled people that had been brought into the land became the inhabitants of the land. Over 70 years, they set up their own way of living. And they were not worshipers of Yahweh. They didn't love God. So therefore, when this huge migration of people came back home, the people who lived in the land were not happy to see them arrive. And they really didn't pay them much attention until after they laid the foundation for the temple. And after they gave that praise, that shout went up, that sound went up, and it got their attention. Now, keep in mind, and I'm almost finished, but you know, in preaching like this, you have to, you can't go too fast telling the story. Amen. And uh, Sister Paler did a great job talking to us today about our lack of attention span. So I imagine some of you, your mind have gone to Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. But bring it back in because you got to follow me on this now. Gotta listen to this. You got to listen to this. So when the people who were not natives of the land, which which this explains why in the New Testament, Jesus said that the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. And the Samaritans didn't have dealings with the Jews because the people of the land that were repatriated uh, were called uh, Samaritans. Now, these were not Jews by nature. So when the Jews came back home, these people were in the land and they were not glad to see them. So verse 4 says, look at what they had become. They had become their adversaries. Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that he had, that the children of the captivity built the temple of the Lord God of Israel. Then came they to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers. And said unto them, let us build with you, for we seek your God as you do. And we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Issa Haddon, king of Ashur, which brought us up hither. They said, since we've been brought to this land and put here, we serve your God. And we want to join in and work with you. Thank God for discernment because they were lying through the teeth. Remember, the text calls them the adversaries. Your adversary don't want to help you. So this is why every believer needs to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And highly anointed so you'll know why somebody is in your life. Amen. We're supposed to help each other do the will of God. Paul said that, that we should judge this, that none of us be a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in our brother's way. These people said, we want to help you. We want to work with you. We want to join you. But Zerubbabel said in verse, verse 3, but Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers, thank God for the leaders of Israel, said unto them, you have nothing to do with us to build this house, to build the house. That is, they literally said, we do not have anything in common. We have no common interest. You can't 
help us with this. See, the church has to be discerning. For not everybody who joins want to help us. Not everybody uh, who joins, I have someone to uh, try to join the happy warriors one time that had we followed their advice, it would have robbed us of our ability to be effective. But the person came disguised as a friend and said, I want to help you. But instead of trying to help us, they tried to silence us. But we discerned that this was not of God. Oh, now, now you begin to see why I'm saying why I'm saying not without the anointing. You need the anointing. In 2019, opportunities will come, but you will need the anointing to discern who's of God and who is not. Because if you don't get it, can you imagine what would have happened had those people weaved and woven their way into the workforce? Oh, they would have had, they would have had Joshua fighting Zerubbabel. Right. Yeah. Amen. They would have had the folk fighting at, and at each other's throat because they would have been the kind of people who you heard me, you heard us talk about people who know how to throw a rock and hide their hand. You know about people who are good at sowing seeds of discord among brethren. They all got along till you join. There are people who take pride in putting this group against that group so as to frustrate the work of the Lord. Upper room, our power is in our ability to remain one in Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, we grow. But we grow with discerning growth. Praise the Lord. Sometimes, and thank God that God has a way of filtering out bad apples. Because not everybody who say, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom. Not everybody who pats you on the back is your friend. Not everybody who says, let me help you, want to help you. So thank God for leader. Ah. Uh, you don't like my preaching today. Leaders who understood, praise the Lord, and who could see and who had discernment. Uh, Dr. Paler talked about foresight. Amen. You got to know how to determine who's who and what's what. So they said, no, we have no common interest. You have, amen, you have nothing uh, to do with us. Uh, to build a house unto our God for, but we ourselves together will build the house of the Lord God of Israel as King Cyrus uh, the king of Persia have commanded us All right, then the people of the land look at this oh then they weakened the hands of the people of Judah see now, then they, they, the colors came out and they weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building. 2019 is your building year. So now, 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 now even though, now please get this, even though they'd been released, Cyrus set them free, but there were still many adversaries. So praise the Lord with 2019 uh, being our year, and we're going to seek the Lord. And the Lord had said to many, your 70 years are up. Don't think, though, that everything is just going to fall in place because there are adversaries who do not want you to become all that the Lord would have you to be. And when you run into them, I just want you to know who they are. And, and, and want you to know what it is so you won't give up on your dream. Pastor said that this was my year, but this, that, and the other has happened, so I may as well give up. No, 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 no. The, 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 you're just dealing with the people of the land. You're just dealing with adversaries. You persevere through them. And if you go on and read, you'll see where they wrote a letter in the days of Cyrus. And they wrote a letter to King Asher, Ahasuerus. They wrote letters during the reign of Ahasuerus, uh, Darius, praise the Lord, uh, Cyrus, and Artaxerxes. And they wrote letters saying that if you let these people uh, build this house, it's going to cost you money. As a matter of fact, uh, they, they were once a great people, 
and they and they rule the world and they rule many nations and you don't want them to build that house and as they wrote these letters and they blocked them at every effort a sad thing happened verse 24 says this uh, then ceased the work of the house of God which was at Jerusalem and so it ceased in the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. All of that revival, that tremendous move of God, stop. I don't hear hammers. Can't smell the wood. I don't hear a workforce. The work has stopped. And uh, I wish I could tell you that it stopped for six months. But if I did, I'd be lying to you. And uh, I like to preach it straight. The truth is, they stopped the work for 16 years. Now, that's a reason why it stayed for 16 years. And that reason was not that God wanted it to stop for 16 years. Mm -mm. The Lord sent them down there to build the house. The Lord sent them down there to complete it. But why did it stop for 16 years? Here's why. It stopped for 16 years because the church made the mistake then that it's making now. You see, what we do now to deal with adversity is we change our doctrine. We change our ways to suit whatever it is that's going on at the time. Mm, we find, I told you that one of the preachers who preached to him was the prophet Haggai. If you go to the book of Haggai, you find Haggai coming to them, praise the Lord, after uh, 16 years. And he said, in the second year of Darius the king, and in the sixth month, in the first day of the month came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai. And it came to him, and it came from him to Zerubbabel and unto Sheatel, Zerubbabel and to Joshua. Same group. And here's what he said, verse 2, he says, This people says, Thus speak the Lord of hosts, saying, this people say, the time is not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built hadn't come. What people? The very people who were sent to build the house because they ran into opposition. They, instead of standing up and fighting, they said, no, we're going to give in. And you know what? Since these people are writing letters and since the government won't let us build, then you know what? The truth is, it really wasn't time. So now the preachers, to go along with their defeat, to make them feel good as failures, began to preach, it's not time. So go and build your own house. Go and build your own community. But don't worry about the temple. Because it's not time yet. Look at how churches are caving. They're caving to the homosexual community. They're caving to sin. When you preach against sin, now they call you judgmental. When you tell folk that they're wrong, the people say, don't judge me. You know, I don't like up a room because over there, that preacher will, will, will call you out for your sin. Why? Because so many other churches now have changed their gospel. They found ways to go along with worldly trends. So much to so that some churches for New Year's Eve had a soul train line. Other churches going to the club. All kinds of things being just like the world. Instead of them affecting the world and fighting against the world, they went along with the world. But thank God for the prophet Haggai. He came and he said, I'm going to tell you why. 
things are not going right for you. You've changed your doctrine. You said it's not time for the Lord's house to be built. He said, but have you noticed? He said, you, you, you eat, but you don't get full. You put clothes on, but you don't get warm. You have jobs, but you can't make any money. And they wanted to know why. He said, because of the Lord's house. You've left God's house undone. And he said, go back and, uh, and, and get the cedar and rebuild God's house. And the Lord will send the revival. So thank God that the Lord sent the prophets and the prophets began to preach. And then I heard God speak to the prophet Zechariah. Zechariah came and spoke to the same Zerubbabel and spoke to the same Joshua. And I heard Zechariah say, this is what the Lord said. This is the word of the Lord to you, Zerubbabel. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit saith the Lord. In other words, he was telling him, you don't need an army. He was telling him that you don't need force, but all you need is my anointing. And with the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you'll be able to come forth and do those things that God has anointed you to do. How many believe today that the Lord has something up the road for you? How many believe today that 2019 is your year? Good God Almighty, but the enemy is coming up already. The devil is trying to say that it's not going to happen. Well, I'm here to tell you that it won't happen if you give in to the devil. But if you let God anoint you, if you let Jesus touch you with his power, if you let Jesus give you his anointing, Tasha, I know what the doctors are saying, but God has the last say. There is something in the anointing of the Lord. I wouldn't give up. I wouldn't throw in the tile if the Lord, God is able to let me live. When the doctors say die, God is able to raise me up. When the doctors say you can't get up, the Lord is able to give me strength. Even when the doctor says I'm weak, because it's not up to the world, but it's up to God. And when God have given you permission to come forward, then he turns around and gives you an anointing, gives you the power to do what he's giving you permission to do. I have permission, but now I need power. Somebody say yes. Yes, Lord. Lift your hands and praise him right where you are. Somebody praise his name. Hallelujah, you can do it. You can do it. You can build. You can go forth. You can be all that the Lord would have you to be. But you need to be anointed. You need the power of the Holy Ghost operating on the inside. And the book of Ezra tells me that after God raised up the prophets, chapter 5, almost done. Chapter 5 says, and then the prophets, Hagar, and the prophet Zechariah, the son of Ido, praise the Lord, prophesied to the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the Lord, God of Israel, when they prophesied, then rose up Zerubbabel. Praise the Lord. And Joshua, he rose up and began to build the house of the Lord that was at Jerusalem. Other words, after the word came, it gave them fire to build God's house. And in chapter 5, they built the house of the Lord. And in chapter 6, they dedicated the temple of the Lord. They got the job done. The devil didn't win, but the saints won. And I'm here to tell you that you're going to win today. 
because I'm going to pray and God's going to anoint somebody anoint you to have power to stand against the enemy power to rise over the devil power somebody say power power to beat him power to win power to cast him out give God praise praise him thank you thank you thank you Woo! grab somebody by the hand and say not without the anointing if he anoints you you can do it if he anoints you you can go through it if he anoints you you can overcome with the anointing you'll win with the anointing you will get through it with the anointing you will overcome it with the anointing good god almighty yeah yes hey yeah hey thank you for the anointing lift your hands and thank the lord for the anointing Woo! thank you thank you anointed at the prison work anointed at the abortion clinic anointed 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 i'm anointed to do what i'm called to do Good God Almighty. That's what makes the difference. The anointing makes the difference. You can't do it without it. How do we get this anointing? Well, it came through preaching, worshiping, through seeking God. And you know, the Lord had, had good news for them because th th there's something, you know, in the book of Zechariah. And, and I'm, I'm getting ready to pray, and we're going we're gonna to go home. But I, I want to just show you this, because I, I owe you this. I, if I don't, I'm going to wish that I had it. Uh, in Zechariah chapter 1, the Bible says, And in the eighth month of the second year of Darius came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Bere Chaya, the son of Ido, the prophet, say, Zechariah, Bere Chaya's son, Ido's grandson, Zechariah, Bere Chaya, Ido, Zechariah. Berechai, Ido, Zachariah, Berechai, Ido. Zachariah means the Lord remembers. Berechai means the Lord blesses. Ido means at the appointed time. So when you put this family together, the Lord remembers and the Lord will bless at the appointed time. Somebody shout. Somebody shout. When the time is right, the Lord will remember. The Lord will bless at the appointed time. Thank you. Woo. Somebody ought to praise the Lord because your appointed time is now. Hey. Then is now. Yes, Lord. 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. It's my time, Lord. My season. Anoint me to go forward. Anoint me in the name of Jesus. Come to the altar. You want your anointing. Come. I want to walk in what I've been released to walk in. I want to do what I've been released to do. I want to be able. See, I've, I've gained permission, but now I need power. See, gain permission, but I need power. Hallelujah. To do what I'm permitted to do. Thank you, Jesus. Power. You can have the car, but if you have no power, the motor doesn't work. It's not going to take you anywhere. Beautiful house. Beautiful chandeliers. All kind of electric gadgets. Every, all the modern inventions and all of the modern conveniences in it. But if you hit that switch and there is no power, yes, sir. nothing in that house yes, sir. works. May as well be a house built in the turn of the century because it has no Glory to God. The anointing is our power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He showed him a vision. You read Zechariah chapter 4, verse 1 and down. And you see the vision of a lamp with a bowl at the top. Pipes running from it. And he's having a conversation with an angel. And the oil is flowing from the lamp. From the trees into the lamp. The lamp is flanked by olive trees. And the angel asks Zachariah, do you know what this means? He said, no, I don't. He said, it means, go tell Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. And then he spake to the adversaries. Yes, oh, great mountain. Yes, before Zerubbabel. You, great mountain, shall become a plain. A plain. And then he said in the text, and you will bring the capstone in sh with shouting. Other words, the they were prophesying that I know that all you have built right now is the foundation. But I'm prophesying about what's going to happen on the day when you lay the last stone. The last stone to be put in is the capstone. And he says, I see the capstone being put in and you're going to be rejoicing uh, in it with the stone being applied. I'm telling you right now, somebody ought to rejoice of the vision of their capstone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we come before you right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Asking you for your anointing. In the name of Jesus. With nothing without it. Without your anointing, Lord. 
the enemies of the land, the adversary, will stop us in our track. But with your anointing, we're able to climb higher. With your anointing, we're able, oh God, to keep on keeping on. In the name of Jesus, Jesus right now, touch every soul today. Touch every soul on the altar, on the altar of the Lord. God, you're able to touch us now and give us strength over the adversary. Strength over the devil in the name of Jesus over every force that will try to block us from our God-given destiny and our God-given assignment in God's time. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you will remember and you will bless at the appointed time. Jesus, we come before you right now. We ask you to give us strength, Jesus. We ask you to anoint us again to do your will. And Father, just as the devil tried to thwart the work of Zerubbabel and the work of Joshua and the work of the people writing letter after letter, a political maneuver after maneuver, trying to stop the work of the Lord. Father, the devil is coming after us. He's writing letter after letter. He's trying to frustrate the works of our hands. He's trying to frustrate the work of the Lord. But God, we're grateful, hallelujah, that you're able to give us power, power, power beyond the devil, power beyond him, power, power, Lord, power to rise above the enemy's tricks, power to rise above his plans, power for those of us who have stopped working. Thank you, Jesus, that we're putting our shoulders to the plow again. Thank you, Jesus, that we're getting involved, getting involved again in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that the fire is rising up in our spirit again. Oh, Lord, we praise you for sending revival in our souls. Oh, Lord, we thank you for sending revival in our minds. Hey, thank you, Lord, for lifting burdens, for breaking chains, for giving us to see that a delay is not a denial and that just because the devil knocked us off our horse, that don't mean that we can't get up and mount up and ride again. Lord, oh, oh Lord, touch around the altar, touch in the audience, touch those who are streaming and the devil has tried to stop them and break their spirit. Let them know that a better day is coming. Let them know that I am their Hagar. I am their Zechariah. And the Lord told me to tell you, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit saith the Lord, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Somebody praise him on the altar until you get through. Seek him till you get through. Seek him till you get through. Come on, seekers. It's my time, it's my 
season. Yes, there are many adversaries, but I came claim victory right where I am. Victory here and now. Victory in the name of the Lord. Good God Almighty, if you believe him. Uh, give him praise where you are. person next to you and ask God to anoint your neighbor right now. Anoint my neighbor. Anoint them to obey you. Anoint them, Lord, to walk in 2019 with power and authority. Anoint them to build on the foundation that they've already laid. Oh! oh! Lord, anoint them to be all you'd have them to be. Oh, Lord, I want your anointing, Jesus. I want your power. Somebody leap up and down and shout, it's all right now. Yeah, yes it is. The devil thought he had me, but I got away. Thought he was going to break my spirit, but I got away. Thought he was going to change my mind, but oh, I got away. Praise him! You keep striving. Don't you go backwards. Don't you listen to the boys. Don't nothing holler destroy many of our brothers like the boys. Barbershop Negroes. Negroes hanging around. They ain't gonna encourage you to go to church. They ain't gonna encourage you to go home to your wife. They ain't gonna encourage you to do anything worthwhile. They gonna call you a hen peck. They gonna call you all those things. But go on and take your hen peck self and walk in your God given destiny. I'd rather be hen peck and blessed of the Lord. I'd rather be in the church and saved and anointed than out there in the world on the street corner on the sidewalk with a bunch of losers who don't know east from west hind the world hind the world of people like that how can they influence you hind the world can folk on the street talk you out of Jesus they can't talk me out of him you know why because of something that I heard one of the teachers say they said you got to know how to think and you got to know how to think Sister Paley, you were talking about thinking you got to know how to think you can't talk me out of him because I know how to think and when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me my soul doesn't cry go to the club my soul doesn't cry go back and sin 
My soul doesn't cry, leave the church, but my soul cries hallelujah. Do I do I have any hallelujahs in here? Hallelujah! Hallelujah!